were trying to do there. I don't know what they were trying to prove, but again, it got taken down. So what do you lot think about that? Think about the, the statue being taken down of the black woman. Well, just, just the statue being put up in, in, in the first place of the actual, you know, because I don't know, I think she was a protester and they were basically saying the reason why they put the statue up was because they wanted to, um, they wanted to symbolise that this was the movement back then. Do you see what I'm coming from? Yeah, but the fact of the matter is they knew that wasn't going to stay up. So, you know, it, 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 this is not our country. So we can't choose your people in our, in, this is not our country. That's number one. However, we are part, we are part of this country, so there shouldn't be any statues of of people who were oppressing us or oppressing our foreparents. So that's really that's just my take on it. I mean, why should we have to? It, it's not why should they be looking up to people who basically try to oppress our ancestors? Yeah. No, I agree because I think to me, like I, I knew it wasn't going to stay up. Even though I'm not going to lie, I was very happy that it did get put up because I think to me it's just about making a point. <laughs> and mm. I, I knew the second they said the mayor was like, "Well, no, it's not been given permission." That was going to get torn down straight away. But I think for me, it's a case of I, I guess it was part of them just again trying to draw more attention to what the, to the agenda that they were pushing. I do agree that reality is this, it's not our country, but if you're saying that, you know, you've now, it's kind of like if you do something bad and you're saying, do you know what, I'm sorry for that. And actually I don't agree with what, or if I'm apologizing for something my grandfather did and I'm like, I don't agree with it. Why would you keep up all these things that all these people that were, you know, oppressive. And I get, I hear that some people are like, you know, but that's not what they've done, but this country has heavily built along with America, their economies off of the back of the slave trade. <laughs> just got them to a point that they're at now. And I think there's this weird thing going on where it's like, we're not going to accept that. We're, we're going to think that, yeah, okay, cool. It's a part of history, but we're not accepting it. But we're apologising all at the same time. So it's like, what are you sorry for? And what have you changed if you're still not accepting that this is what's happened? So I don't know. I find it, you know. I find yeah. it weird, but I, I'm I'm ha I'm here for the statues getting put up, even though they're going to get taken down. But I'm here for it. <laughs> um, it's a difficult one. I think it's not nothing straightforward with that. Um, essentially, you know, people that are when we say from this country, that that's kind of like a it's it's hard to kind of put into perspective because the oldest bones found in the UK were actually black bones. So we don't actually know it was here first. Um, but because that, and I'm only saying that based on obviously what you said, you said obviously it's not our country. Um, when it comes to the statues, essentially they're going to put up statues that they want to look up to. They don't really care about the, 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 the background because in history, they don't teach the background of these people. What they do is, is they just teach uh, the great things that they did that they benefited from. Do you understand? So like, for instance, I can't remember the statue name in, 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 in uh, I think it was Bristol, in Bristol, that they took down a pool. If I stand, say that again, so I can, you can correct so me. Ed, so Edward Colston, that's the statue. Well, it was in Bristol, yes? Yeah, you had 80, you had trafficked 80,000 slaves, I think, or something like that. Right, like, so, that, they're gonna they're gonna have some sort of um, ownership to him because obviously he helped his local community. Right. So regardless of how he managed to go and do that, they don't care, innit? Um, they've got like a very dwarfed way of Robin Hood. So that whole Robin Hood kind of ethos, where oh, um, it's all right to do bad as long as obviously some other people are gaining from it, innit? Um, mm -hmm. And I think we all have that ethos in the back of our head at times as well. So we can't, you know, we can't say that we we don't have that. So essentially, if I am robbing, if I'm going up to, uh, I'm from South, so if I'm going up to Knightsbridge and I'm doing loads of robberies in Knightsbridge and getting away with it, bringing it back to poverty-driven areas, um, I'm deemed within the poverty-driven areas as as a hero. But up in Knightsbridge, I'm 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 deemed deemed as a menace. Yeah. So 
uh, when we're looking at the statues, that's how they see it. Um, problem is, is, is obviously within history, they need to teach true history. And I've, and I've said this once before, I think true history is key. And once they teach true history, it gives a fuller picture for everybody. Um, it doesn't mean that we're not still going to have people that have still have that Robin Hood kind of uh, perspective um, because they, bene they directly benefited from it. Um, so that's why the statue thing, in the sense of us pulling down the statues, not us, like us on the, on the, but black people. And if it was even black people, because it's obviously no one actually knows, I don't think anyone's been fully charged for that yet, or any of the statues. Um, um, I think that it's just a start at defacing a lot of and challenging essentially ch challenging any of the um, weird things and horrible things that have happened in the past uh, us pulling on uh, what well, keep saying us but people pulling down the statues is not going to change anything they'll just as, as most people know they'll just take them and put them in the in the museum because um, they're trying to hold on to their heritage that's part of their heritage um, I think the biggest issue for me is that the average people of today don't actually know the true history of each individual and what their part was not just in the slave trade but just in general so if you're going to push a story uh, within history I think that they should just push both sides so you should say yeah he was a wicked man he did this 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 and this 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 but also he did this the problem is is, is the reason why they can't do that is because the bad outweigh the good there's a lot more bad that he's done, that he has done good. And that's the reason why they never, ever push that narrative. That narrative never comes across. You see, you see for me, yeah? For me, it's like, like what you're saying is true. But the, the thing that annoys me yeah, is, like I said, they hide the, the, the truth. They hide the bad stuff that they did. And we see they, they praise the good stuff they did. But you can be discussing it with a white person because... What I've seen is statues that have been taken down haven't been done by black people. Like, if you look at the footage that's been taken down, it's white students from Bristol. Now, I don't have a problem with that because, again, they feel the need to work for, you know, calling it. They understand that, you know, this guy was a racist and whatnot. But it's like, when you speak to a white person now, and then they, they always find a way to bring it back to black people. It's like, if, it's, if you say, Ra, hold on, um, they put a statue of a Hitler in Stanford Hill. If the right wing right now, yeah, when they put Hitler in Stanford Hill, you wouldn't even have to see a Jewish person. Like, people be fighting for Jewish people. You see what I'm coming from? And that's what kind of angers me, is that man has to explain so, a white person, or even sometimes black, that raw, you know, this guy was racist, he was bad at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like raw, like... That's, that's what they're for. The reason why you wouldn't have to fight them when it comes to Hitler is because the British were affected by it as well. They don't like Hitler either. Yes. So he was an enemy of the Jews and he was an enemy of, of theirs. So this is why they can find common ground in that because... To, but at the end of the day, when it comes to when it comes to the things that we have to deal with, we were the only ones that were dealing with it. So it's like, <laughs> you'll get the odd white person that will stand up and, and whatever. They're still not fully educated though, because to be educated with black history, the real black history, you, it's something that you have to take on and study yourself. The black history that a lot of even black people know, it's not even the right, it's not even the true black history. So, so how can we expect them to know the true history if most of us don't even know the, 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 the true black history. So do, yeah. do you feel like we need to educate ourselves first before even speaking to, to any white person about anything? Definitely. I, I, I mean, definitely. If they ask me a question, then I can answer them and they might not like the answer, but I'm not going to go out of my way to educate, educate them. I've, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. And their history is not nice. It's not going to be nice a nice thing for them to hear. Did you, They've did only you, ever heard good things about their history. 
No, because this is if what you're saying is true, but then it's this is this is now what it leads on to the other thing, which is. To teach our history in schools, or should we teach it first to our own yeah. people? Who are actually bringing it in coming from? Because if they are not said the Robin Hood culture, if they're not trying to show the bad side. How can we expect them to then teach it in our classrooms? I would never expect it, and I would never leave it down to the classroom to teach my children their history. Never. And I think that's a very valid point because what I've come to realise, especially through, so just just through some extra work that I've taken on in my workplace, is you need to educate yourself as a black person on what black history is. Like mm. you really do need to educate yourself and understand it. And this constant idea. I'm a bit against of this demand that you know all well, the schools should be doing and the government should be doing and it's like why there's this consistency of looking for handouts and don't get me wrong it doesn't mean point out what's wrong because what's wrong is wrong but that constant dependency like why are you depending on a system that isn't built to build you up <laughs> like why is that the case mm. I, 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 whereas I feel like if we just keep it on black history yeah, schools are not going to, I don't think schools are going to teach it. I feel like even with the statues, what you're going to find is these handouts that we're asking for, it's going to come to an end because what they're going to realise is, hold on, we're going to have to give up everything. We have to literally give up everything in order to make things right. With because let's keep it real. Right now, we're in this whole Brexit, whatever situation. Britain is going to rely on the 18 Commonwealth countries trade yeah the workforce yeah you've already seen in the news how they were talking about what with hong kong we're going to be three million yeah in, in hong kong they're going to get britain yeah and they're, they're talking about those that were in the windrush scandal uh, that those caribbeans are now going to have to prove they're going to have to prove and show raw like you know, how, you know, if they were British, they'd have to show documents to prove it. And the difference between Hong Kong and the Caribbean, that Hong Kong has got an economic wealth base that Britain respects. Do you see where I'm coming from? If you look at Waterloo, if you look at um, Knightsbridge, Westminster, a lot of those buildings are owned by Chinese people, those new buildings that are owned by Chinese people. You feel me? So I feel like, right, like, we, we have got a long way to go. We've always had a long way to go because, like Karen said, we're in this by ourselves. And I don't really think there's people that may help. There's allies and whatever. The school system is not going to help. Like, you barely even teach your child basic. You know the ones that are like basic, common life skills? They, they don't teach us about credit. They don't teach us about, you know, um, ownership. They don't teach you about health. I've never, never gone to school about health. Literally. Like, you know the ones that are like, and I'm not talking about, you know, Answers and I'm talking about just basic hygiene on obviously how to clean. It. I don't know, maybe I missed that. When I was in school, but again, at the same time, I can't see the basic life schools at school, so I can't expect them to be black history. So I'm coming from yeah, you. Lot, you're not with me in that. You lot, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The thing is, I do, I do think like if there's going to be like in terms of things that are being proposed, like it would be good if there was education about black history, but like honest education about black history, not just the whole typical, you know, black people went back as far as being slaves and, and, and that's all your history, that's all you're getting, you know? And, and I guess, and it can be very easily interlinked into this country and how this country operates because of the interactions that I had. But I feel as though, doing something like that would probably break that narrative that a lot of night people that don't necessarily have much experience with black people, it, it can break down those stereotypes from early. Do you get what I mean? There could be a better understanding. So I'm not against the, it being proposed because I think other races do need to learn it and understand it, especially in an integrated society or in any form of where you're going to be integrating people from other ethnicities. I think it's definitely important, but you know, I do agree. It's like it just can't be left. You can't leave it to the schools to be doing that. And I think that's what I've seen from a lot of people who are trying to, I guess, open their eyes a little bit more to 
other people's experiences in regards to black people's experiences, you know? Can I, can I, sorry, can I just interject and ask a question yeah. here? It's, yeah. it's, it's still on the same topic, but um, if I was to ask everybody that's part of the, the, the call, um, do we believe the government is for the people? No. That's nothing to do with black, white, Asian, Pan Asian. Do you think the government is for the people? I don't think. No. I don't think this government's for people. The thing is, I don't think they. I, I can't. Not even the Jamaican government's for the people. I don't even feel like I don't know any government in the world that's for the people. Okay, so if they're not for the people, then we shouldn't be expecting anything from them. I think the. I think the the, the problem that we have here is is that. We entwine the fact that we, as black people, yes, we know that we've been disadvantaged right from the beginning. We know that people have profited left, right, and center, and still are prof profiting from the black continent and also the black people being uh, in, in, pov in a poverty state. That's, that's not an accident. Um, and I, I just, and then on the other side, what we do is we say, oh, well, I feel like the schools should teach it or, or, or the churches should teach it, or whatever the case may be. But if the government's not for us, nobody's going to do anything. Now, if I was to ask, and I know this sounds very blasé and a little bit off topic, but if I was to ask anyone about the Chinese struggle, or, or the uh, or the Asian or the Pan Asian, should I say, stand corrected, uh, struggle, because every nation's gone through it off the hands of places like the UK and America, every country. There's not a country on this earth that hasn't gone, from, gone through some sort of war stage with those two continents, or the Spanish or the French. So uh, if I was to ask you lot, do you lot know about the Pan-Asian and the Asian struggle? I do know. They don't, they don't teach that in school now. They don't, yeah. Do you understand? So. We've got to understand that, innit? We've got to, we've got to get that into our into our heads that they don't teach those narratives, and it's not an accident. And the Chinese, or I always say Chinese, but Asians or Pan Asians, they they just get on with it. They genuinely just get on with it. They find their own little uh, uh, stream and they get on with it. I think with us, we, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be hooked up on the the state that black people are in, because we should. But I think that we need to put more actions and talk less. And I think that that's the problem with a, 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 a lot 100%. of things. It's the truth. But we are definitely in a, we're definitely in a, a, in a limbo state with one another because we don't trust one another. We don't mm. trust one another. We don't know enough knowledge. Our history, a lot of our history is erased. Our heritage, we can't even go maybe two, 300 years back. To, to find our lineage uh, of where we actually originate from um, for a lot of us, especially Caribbean. Um, so, do you yeah, know, we're, in, we're do in, you know, in a bad do state. Know, do you know why I feel like, I feel like um, if you, I feel like it's harder to do the things that we want to do, all right, in two parts. I think England is a very good country to try to get on with things and build a business as a black person, but as a, as a, black person if you're going to build a business in um a country like england and you're going to do it professionally it's mm. difficult for you to find like-minded people not to say there's not like-minded people there but just on a particular level because we're so we're kind of scattered about and there's not a lot of us right for instance if you was in for instance ghana and a lot of people don't really like to talk about this class system and stuff, but if you were in Ghana and you were doing certain things, you would automatically know who you can go to, to for certain things because it's just one black country. And so, you know, if you need somebody to be, if you need a web developer, then you'd have, you'd know some, you know, you'd have somebody, you'd have a somebody who somebody would probably know who's got a web developing company. You know, and you know, somebody who has a 
a person in England. But she's this is is in England just because it's kind of your audio your, your you audio. might be perfect doing things that you do it everybody else around kind of not black so you have to be so what i'm trying to say is you can just get on with it and when you say people don't trust people it's not a matter of trust but we don't all think the same we don't all think the same and we're not all the, and we and the thing is we're not all the same no, but I don't um, think any race is all this. I don't think any race is all the same. I we're not, like, but, I'm, but in England, what I'm trying to say is, in England, there's only there's not a lot of us. So if you wanted to find a a group of business people with a particular mindset, in uh, you know, in England, listen, and even the networking things don't work because I completely, I, I think I've been to a few in my life, and they, I refuse to become a part of these networks because if you go to a networking group. In England, it's like it's either people who are trying to be a lot more than they are and trying to over. Um, and so it's for me, it's just easier for me to be in smaller groups of people at all times, and I just know what every individual can do. So I think, I think, I'm sorry to interject, but I feel like I think I, 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 um, I agree in what you're saying, but I think that we could look at it from a different kind of perspective. And the perspective that I look at it right now at the stage that I'm at um, in life is I'm not looking for the next group. I am not looking for uh, the business group. I don't, I'm not doing that. Once I'm in the position that I need to be in, everyone around me, those that want to be part of whatever's going on, or they have something, or even if they don't have something, it's for me to drill it into their head and teach them, no matter how many L's that I may take, as long as I don't sink my ship, I'm gonna do that. And I think that's the issue. I think that there is successful business people out there, black businesses, and what they do is, is they tend to look for a group of uh, of successful black people. To, yeah, to, that's to, not me. To obviously, to, 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 <laughs> to, to elevate, to elevate, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I just feel like, sometimes it's like that whole crabs in the bucket in it everybody's climbing on one another to reach the top in it and what what you do is you're going to have a ring of crabs at the top of the that's able to get out but how many people are actually putting their hand back down and saying actually come like well I've got, I've, got, I've got i've got a business and you can have that business too just label it something else you can do the exact same thing as me but what we do is we say oh we don't want to teach them that so, for instance, if I say, for instance, and this sounds uh, just just an example, let's say I set up a trainer business, and I'm selling tens of thousands of trainers every year, and it's not a massive business, but it's a decent little turnover, maybe a quarter of a million, half a million every year. You know, nobody wants to teach none of their people around them to start a trainer business too, because you start seeing it as competition. But there's enough money. If I bring yeah, up that person and say, well, do you know what? I've got a manufacturer. I can do all this. All you need to do is do the designs or whatever the case may be. Or even if it's the thing you say, all right, cool. Let's start another train of business. It's going to be yours. Just give me a percentage. Yeah, but who's going to do it? Gonna... Nobody does that in business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's no, what I'm but trying no, to say. It doesn't even matter. Black or white or Asian, nobody does that. What you do, you have your business and you teach your oh, children. No, no, no. no, no, no. Asians definitely do it. So what, for they instance, teach each other? Yes, Asians. The same business. Asians do it. That's why they own the corner shops and they own so many corner shops. I know for a fact that they do that. Sri Lanka. If I could just quickly interject, I just want to go backwards a bit to go forward, and I'm just interjecting because I don't want to go too far from where we were speaking, what we were speaking about before. So obviously, like I come from a Ugandan background. To my experience is different. My dad can legit go back in generations. Like he he knows his family history. Mm -hmm. Mm. so I have a different perspective in that way like I know where he comes from my mum does to an extent but is stinted because of issues that happened in terms of in war but she knows back mm. to like her great 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 grandma mm. but prior to that there's like th there's blurred lines there but she's aware of that you know and mm. her family are aware of that but my dad can go quite far back and I think in just looking at how they raised my, my siblings and myself. It's a case of, we want a different life for you. And so we're chasing the dream, which is what they were doing. We're gonna move to England. We're gonna raise our kids there. You're gonna get 
your education there, you're going to go to uni, you're going to get a job, like, and that was the dream they were chasing. Mm. So it's like, I feel like that, I think I got to about 19 when I really started asking a lot of questions. Like, I don't really know much about Uganda. Like, tell me about it. Tell me about family. Like, talk to me about the history in your family. And my mum and my dad were both quite shocked because they were like, oh, I haven't thought about or talked about these things in years. And so I think there is that thing about teaching your, like, about, about passing on that knowledge, you know? Because mm. my thing was, I don't want to have kids and I can't tell you anything past mm. the life I've experienced. Do you get what I mean? Mm. And so I think for some people, they do have that, but it's like, it's not the prerogative. Like, my mum and dad were looking at me like, why do you want to know all these things? Mm. Why are you so obsessed with the country? Because it's a country they've left. <laughs> do you get what I mean? It's something they've mm. left behind them for the idea of giving better. So it's like, why do you want to look backwards when we brought you here type of thing? But I think mm. as things have moved on and as times progressed between then and now, they are very much into the know your family. I want you to know your mm. family tree. I want you to understand, you know, and don't get it twisted. I was raised in a way where it was like traditions in terms of respect, mannerisms, things like that. Yeah, I was brought up with all of that. But it was like, give me the juicy stuff. Like, give me the actual depth of the history. Now, making that point to kind of go on to say, Last week we touched on talking about culture and I was saying I feel like the culture has been stripped and, and therefore that's where I feel like we've got a lot of sort of sitting ducks in terms of people not necessarily knowing or always knowing what to do or how to go about it. And I think it is a case of families don't support each other like they used to support each other. And from when the family structure has been targeted, yeah, and it heavily has been targeted, even down to the media. You have black people that believe that black men don't stay in relationships or build their families. Yeah. That's a yeah. problem. <laughs> oh, and you'll have them still pushing that same narrative. You'll have black women pushing that narrative. Oh, I don't want to be with a black guy because, no, they're just going to, what are you going to do? Just give me a baby and leave. And unfortunately for some people, it is their case, but it's not the reality of a lot of people. I know a lot of people who still have both parents in their households. I know a lot of people in these, in, like in our generation that, are still with their partners or are still building a healthy life. And even if they're not, they're still very much in their child's life and their child is still the center and focus of what they do, you know? So their child doesn't necessarily feel it in that way. They don't have an absent or missing parent. Mm. But I think the issue is, is that I think like, cause even when I just look at my own, so there's like, there's, there's six of us in terms of siblings in my household. And when I look at it and I think about the fact that we all do our own thing. And we've consistently spoken about the fact that on the few occasions that we've come together to make something happen, it happens. And it happens with success and ease because everyone's taken the burden off of each other. My mum at the minute is the biggest pusher for like building the family in that way. But still, she's building it by herself because she's gone to do it her way and everybody else is still doing it their way. And I think there's that breakdown. Aaron, I hear the point that you're making about other people helping other people, but I think genuinely it needs to start in the household. Definitely. Those things mm -hmm. need to start in the home. <laughs> like before you go outside and you do it, because you're going to have your friends that you might be like, do you know what, let's maybe bring this person in or let's get yeah. this person to help us out. When my mum started doing certain moves with property and stuff like that, I was like, my friend Nisha does accounting. Bring her in. <laughs> She's somebody that's trustworthy. Yeah. And my mum happily took to it. Do you get what I mean? And that's, so I think naturally, if you're doing that in the home, you are going to naturally have people you come across and you will bring yeah. in for your benefit and theirs. But I do think it needs to start from the home. I don't think that that lack of trust, I think, comes from friends because these are people you've necessarily grown with. And every friend and they're not a great friend. And they're not necessarily people that have the same mindset as you either. I agree that I mean, most things start from the home, but I also believe that uh, the, the biggest trust issues come from the home too. So the biggest trust issues come from the home. And that's the reason why we go through and we, 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 we're traumatised right from the beginning. You're traumatised based on the skeletons in the closet in most families. And, and we, we, no, nobody is um, exempt from the traumas. Nobody. I have met nobody yet that's, that's exempt from that. So for me, I think the biggest trust issues come from the family. That you, that, that's, that's, I don't know if that's just what I think for my... That's it. When you're talking about I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Jesse. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can hear yeah. you. Right, cool, yeah. So um, basically, for me, it's like, when you're talking about family, yeah? What is family? Because I only have family that are not on the same page. I've got loads of family that are not on the same page. I've got one side that's Muslim and then one side that's Christian. And these men will rather ride for their religion before even anything to do with themselves. Now, for me, my idea of family has changed because I've got friends that I've grown with and they've seen the process in the household. Or we may be in two different households that we're in at the moment, but the household itself doesn't mean just a building. It means actually a group of people. And this is where I feel like it's, it's a very thin line when we're saying family. Because again, if you're with your husband, your kids, that's something you've built. Your husband was your friend at first. Then you married him. Then your kids were obviously grown from that. Just so someone coming from that seed of investment or that seed of knowledge. Whereas with your friends and family, can you build that together? I believe so. I believe there's, even if you've got one friend, like one friend that's on the same page, literally the younger people, because there's always a person that, will look up to you or wants to be with you or wants to be around you. We all have like a little brother or a little cousin or even someone younger that we know or even someone older. Then I feel like then we got a kind of like the, the four of us could be a family right now. The four of us could be a family when it comes to actually building this whole aspect of black group that someone coming from. So it's like, I feel like because I've, I've seen some family members who their parents have got wealth but because their child has gone on a different side of religion or, or different side of, of, of sexuality or whatever, they're like, no, nah, you're done. I'm not even, you see what I'm coming from? And I'm not saying that you have to, you have to listen to everything your family says, but we've got to be very careful when we're defining family. You see what I'm coming from? Because otherwise we're going to end up, you know, getting lost in translation with those family members that are not on staff. But where, where do you go? If your whole family's not on it, but you're on it and you've got like 10 grand, you want to buy a house you want to who do you go to where do you go so i'm coming from so i thought it needs to be an element of, of 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 there needs to be an element of that outside of the actual biological family to make a, 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 a group economic based family set outside so the indians yeah you're right the indians will go and be like right i'm going to teach my kids to go to school college and whatever but you see Raj, yeah, but the, the indians are all into you get me and i'm going to help raj uh, I'm going to tell him, look, we've got, we've got a fund or we've got an investment fund that we use to help build other people up. Like my brethren, sorry to cut you out, but my brethren, yeah? He um, well, used to be my friend at the time. He's from the Sikh community. He says to me that the Sikhs come into his area. Yeah, they have their own version of JSA or universal credit. They go to the temple, they will sign up, and if they're an immigrant or if they ain't been there for a while or whatever, they, just, they will my get or my Migrant. They'll get a house. They'll get a even find them a wife. That's on. That's on the same kind of. You saw I'm coming from because obviously they've understood that some people are not always coming from a secure. You, you saw I'm coming from. Like you, you see where I'm coming from when I'm when I'm, what I'm, what I'm Yeah, and it's like I think it's a community base, but I do think as well some of the issues that come up, I guess in let's say just in families where that is the case. Whether it's because, and, and I think just to the point is that I was making about everyone doing different, their own thing, is there's this weird state of competition. Like a lot, a lot of black people are competing against each other. So, and I can't, it's definitely not all, but in a lot of cases, especially from the startup, it's like a bit of a competition sometimes. So it's like, I need to do better than my cousin quick. So I'm not gonna focus on what, I don't wanna sacrifice and be patient and feed into what you're doing to then get to what I want to do. Do you get what I mean? But I find in a lot of Asian families, that is what they do. But I think there's also a big community base. But I think the, the community base that's in place, is kind of like I said um, on our last one as well. I don't think there's that community aspect. I think outside of us being black, like, where's the community aspect? Yeah, but, while we, yeah, but I'm a little confused here because obviously you was, you're advocating obviously your internal family, yes, first and foremost. So, how can you expect community if you if you're advocating internal? Because even though I've got my family, I still have friends. We all still have friends. We all still have family. Oh, no, you're, in, you're in, a, you're in agreement. You're in agreement to that. Then you're in agreement that actually your family is not just because we're obviously based on what you and Karen were saying. I thought that you were saying 
your actual household. I'm or the, or, or your brothers and sisters that you're I'm definitely, I'm definitely still sticking to my household. And, yeah, and the reason why I'm, I'm, and sorry. the reason why I'm sticking to my household is because even as far as my, I remember when I was starting my business almost five years ago, and I said to my family, my extended family, what I was gonna do. And I said, anybody who wants to become a part of it, just let me know because this is the year that I'm starting. It was New Year's, I never forget. And I gave everybody, there's at least 30 of us that New Year's and nobody came forward. And as a family, and I mean me and my three children and my husband, and my and at that time my kids were eight, lit, under, all under, well, some of them were under 10, now they're 12, 13, and 17. They helped me in my business. And the thing is, they help us. And the thing, and the reason why it works is because they understand they understand more than what I could explain to somebody outside of my family. They understand why we're doing it. They, they understand that they, they can see the vision. They can see what we want in the future. No one's trying to step on anybody's toes. We all know, all right, this week was a slow week. That week was a quick, uh, that week's not a slow week, even since they've been off school. You know, even, even as far as, I don't even know, I was saying to my husband the other day, I don't even know how they're going to go back to school and be normal because they've literally, been doing business for the whole time that they have been off school and doing this quarantine they were doing it before but now it's just even more so everyone's got their role we've been working really hard the, the business is even growing during quarantine so for me I'm not trying to say it wouldn't be nice to have and I do have people outside who I would call still my family and people who I always go to like Jesse you know I've got, so there are definitely people but I'm not going to go out there and start looking into the community for people who I can start to what I do is I try to give back a lot. So I try to give back. What I would do is go into the community and probably, hopefully, by the time I become, when I'm able to give back to the youth who I know want to be entrepreneurs and I can try to help them in some way, go back to Jamaica and give back to the entrepreneurs there. But as far as me seeing somebody and saying, you know what, you can do this too. I mean, if they want to do that, that's not a problem. And if they need advice because they want to do it, that's not a problem either. But... You know, everybody doesn't have the same mindset and they don't, you know, and then I feel like as well, a lot of black people do start business because they feel like they're starting business because they want to get rich today or by next year, I'm going to be a multimillionaire or, and I feel like the way how I've tried to build my businesses, I don't even want to see the first million. If it happens, it happens. But really, I'm just trying to build a platform that my children then can develop on. So it's not, I'm not even, I don't care about the money part of it. It's just that I know that we need to just start coming together and doing things instead of talking. This is my doing something instead of talking. And this is the reason, this is the, this for me, this is what black people need to do. Just do something. And if we're all doing something, you know, if we're all doing something, then eventually the, 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 it's like you, it's like a wheel. We all need to just start by doing something and then the wheels will start turning. You know, the Asians can do it, so we can do it too. I just, I, I just obviously, I once again, in agreement to what you both have said, um, and, you know, um, it's nice that obviously you stood by obviously what you, how you feel and what you think. And, um, I just, obviously my, the way that I see it, it's just, I just believe that, um, to build a community, you've got to put your hands out and you've got to pull people up. And yeah, sometimes it can feel like a weight on your ankles, but I just feel like we're at a stage in our lives that, that that's going to have to happen. Otherwise, you're going to have people pull apart around you. Now, yes, you've got to have self... Uh, you've got to have self... Uh, there's got to be an aspect of self first. But if you manage to make a platform or you manage to be at a certain level, then that's the point or time of actually putting your hands out and saying, come, this is what we're doing. Come, this is what we're doing. What ends up happening is, is that we get, we get burnt and then we go, oh, do you know what? I'm done. I can't be bothered. And we stop being the person that we are and we start, we put our shields up, but sometimes the shields are so high that we're never ever looking for anyone to pull up again. Um, so that's why when I was explaining, going back to what I was say, trying to explain was the Asians do it, uh, what they do is, is they'll buy a shop and it'll be one guy's shop and then there will be a little nephew or cousin or family relative because they're not all blood related. You know, you ask them, if you actually sit and ask them, 
they will tell you, we're not all blood related. And they will borrow money to the non-family to go and open another shop. And whatever their, whatever their arrangement is, they're digging money out and saying, you can have a corner shop too. And you know more time, the corner shop is like around the corner. And then they will do the exact same thing. And they keep doing it and they keep doing it. I don't see that in the black community. What is that happening? The reason you're not seeing that in the black community is because not all black people have that mindset to go and start something. So if, for instance, for me, you would, when, when an Asian person is starting a business, right? They start the business and who's in the, who's in the shop helping them? Whoever it is that's in the shop that's helping them is who they then go and help, right? So for instance, for my business, who's in my business helping me? Remember when I'm inundated with things to do, the only people that are really helping me are the people in my household. So there are a lot of things. So you have to start with, yeah, you but know. Is that because the, that's the, you, the same as Asians? Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting, everyone's busy getting on their own thing. Everyone's living their lives. So I have to nurture my children because I know, you know what? I'm going to need to help my children one day to do what it is that they want to do. And I know that at this particular moment, my children want to go into business and they want to, obviously they're going to have to take, someone's going to have to take over this business. Mm -hmm. You know, but some of them want to go with someone, someone, you know, but they understand the bit right now. And I'm telling you this now, if I was to leave my business or if anything was happened to me, I could leave my 12 year old son to run my business. I'm confident of that. Right. Because he knows all of the suppliers. He knows all of the people who we sell to. He knows all of the, because he goes on the road with his dad. So he knows all of the, sh the, the, the shops throughout the UK that we sell to. He knows all of my suppliers, wherever, all over the world that my suppliers are. He knows the way I will communicate to them. So the thing is, it's not easy to sit down and teach somebody all of this information. And the, 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 the you know, and I think with the Asians, they would probably have somebody that comes, they would have a family member, like a cousin that lives with them. So with that family member, they'll give them certain responsibilities. And with that responsibility, then the family member kind of understands the business. Then they can say, you know what, you can have your, you can have your own business too. Just like I would say to my kids, you know what, you can have your own business too. You don't have to sit down in Jamaica Valley, do something for yourself. And because you know what it is that you can do, you can send them out there and they can go and make it. And you can all benefit, you know, you can all, just because they're doing something that's similar or the same to you, doesn't mean, but black, it's not like that with black people. So you as black people need to, if you have got something like a business, you have to nurture your children. That's to me, that's, that, it makes more sense. That's what you have to do. You have to nurture your children into it. If, yeah. if, I, if I didn't nurture my children into this business, my business couldn't, I don't know how my business will survive. I'm being honest with you because the amount of work that they put in, it's like a proper adult that's putting in the work. And I, it's because who am I going to go to to ask to come in to do the help? And remember, when a business is young, you know, people always think, oh, but your business, why don't you just employ people? It doesn't work like that either. No, so it, it doesn't work like that. And, 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 and the thing is... So essentially, you're just using the resources that you have around you. You, you have to, and this is yeah. and these are what this is what the Asian people do. They just use the resources that are around them, which happen to be their extended family. My extended family were interested. Yeah, but they, not all the time. Interested. Not all the time, the extended family is actually blood related. I think that maybe yeah. that's my point. Yeah, I, I understand. Sometimes they are though. This is this is my point. If there was people from the outside that came in and took an interest in what I was doing, and said, you know what, and they were, and they and they came and they built with us. And then they said they wanted to do some other sort of manufacturing distribution. There's no, I'm helping them because you helped me. I'm definitely doing that. But it's not always the way. It's not all the way. It's not always the way. Do we always... the, easiest way, the easiest way for me has been, you know what? Just nurture the kids into it. Because I, I, I don't like, I think just thinking about like my cousin's husband's business, he runs it. He employs people. He, he's also trained his kids up in the business that he's doing now so they can run the shop for him. And mm. I'm just thinking about the level of support that he gets because I think I'm just hearing what we're saying and how it's coming out. And I think I, I get it. But I think some of what we're saying is sounding like we're saying black people won't support black people. What, sorry, what black people what? Like, don't support black people. Oh, no. Like, I'm in not terms of that. 
But yeah, I, but get like the, I, I get the support. I get the support that I need from black people. But I'm just, I think everybody just on their own. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I, I don't need that type of support to be honest with you. The support that I get is the support that I need from black people, and I thank God for the support that I get from black people. Black people support what they love, and I'm very thankful for that. But in terms of my business, um my family support me as in my household and I don't expect outside support because everybody's busy doing their own thing and I, I, I understand that and yeah. it, you know not everybody's a risk taker like I am so I, I understand that too I don't hold it against my family so and I know that if they could they probably would support me but everybody's trying to make a living for themselves and this is the thing yeah. black people don't have that choice they have to go to work and make money and 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 me saying oh I want to start this business they're just like what do you mean I'm gonna I think as well that is where the like the disadvantage of the way society moves does come into it. Do you get what I mean? Because even, even like yeah. the the idea of you got to work ten times harder. Like I said, the dream yeah. that my parents were chasing for us when they came here was get a job, <laughs> go uni, yeah. get a job. That's yeah. it. Do you get what I mean? And so that aspect of exploring business. When I came to learn, like my dad back home he had businesses when they came here they had businesses they ran a corner shop these are all things I've not I weren't born while I was a baby when they were doing it so I I didn't see these things do you get what I mean but still their talk to me was (laughs) go get a job and it was a case of it was like a survival mentality in this country like this is how you need to you know get by to survive but just thinking about even the whole idea of like family and support and how that works like my cousin's husband's shop is the only shop my dad buys from he imports his stuff straight from uganda That's good. so in a way he's like i'm i'm helping the economy back home because i'm oh, buying cool. my product there my dad don't step he rarely steps so he steps foot into shops like tesco and asda for things like milk <laughs> like otherwise all the food that he cooks and he would be cooking for us he grew us up on hard food it was like that other food's not proper food so you have to cook the food in your house and know what you're putting in it all the food that he bought was literally from my like my cousin's husband's shop and if it wasn't from there it was from the corner the guy in the corner shop who he had made friends with so they would bring him in on stuff and vice versa and i think you know so it's like sorry yeah so i think like to me it's like i've seen that sense of community and how it works and it does still lead me to believe that it does start from your family personally i know people have chosen to take different routes and they come from really good households in the sense of you know six bedroom household massive garden and and they choose a different route and they sit and you scratch your head and you go oh well why don't you your mum and your dad they're they're decent like they're proper decent and they'll be like yeah but you don't get it they're for themselves yeah Mm. do you understand so that's why i said at the beginning i said not at the beginning but at the start of this kind of uh, discussion was the biggest trust issues are within the family and that mm. traumatizes people do you mm. understand and I feel like sometimes it's easier to step out of your initial family and rebuild a family so Definitely. essentially yeah. if you have like a external family you tend to uh, there tends to be it's that family aura that you have but then there's boundaries as well and everyone understands everyone's boundaries where when it's the immediate household family there is no boundaries people take the they take the mick left right and center and i think that's what causes the divide within the household you know favoritism that child's more favoritism that has more you know has more chance of doing things within mum and dad than the other one because the other one's a little bit different because that one's book smart and that one's more sporty do you understand um and i think that that's what causes big big drifts within the family within the household so i'm not in disagreements to anything that anybody's saying i'm just saying that based on i can own, i'm only sharing my experience and sometimes it's not my personal experience. Sometimes it's something that I've, I've witnessed, something I've been around that I've seen with my own eyes that these things tend to happen. Or, you know, I know this sounds very far-fetched, you know, uh, mum and dad split up because there's someone's, you know, gone away with the fairies. Do you know what I mean? With someone else. Um, and I feel like these are the stuff that dislodges the family, where when you're on the external it's not, there's not that. There's a lot less of that. 
because that's what you're trying to escape. So you can rebuild your family and be like, actually, this person is my family based off of this, 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 and this. Not just, oh, this person is my family because I've known them for a very long time or they're, my, they're, yeah. they're the same blood. Um, mm. But I, I think, maybe just if you want to kind of Obviously, we tracked it back to the question, the original question, isn't it? Because I feel like we definitely digressed a bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely. There's one of the ones where you see what it is. I understand the four of us are all passionate, and we, we know what it is. We've all got different experiences. My experience, experience is very similar on the extended side because obviously, we're not blood related, but we're family, you know, vice versa with Karen and obviously Vicky as well. But when it comes to building, Find that there's only a very, very few selected in our actual family. Like my mum's got land for us in Ghana, and my mum, bless her, she's done a bit. My dad is now doing his bit, but when they came into UK, everyone, no one had a plan. Yeah. No one. Had, it was literally. This is it. You know, this is it. Coming from no, and and growing up in obviously in South London, in Elephant and Castle, in Waterloo, and that growing up, I always saw Caribbeans practicing that group economics where. They would buy a house, they would have a shop and whatnot. I only got to the Indian part later, but that fusion is obviously some family members are going to be on it and some are not. And some actually bury the trauma so deep in the family. When you start building these things, they don't trick it because the family are like, well, hold on. I came, I invested such and such. That may be like, hold on, I put, I, um, I put all this money in and the mum didn't do anything. You went and left with the kids when you got a wrong spot. Now one's rich, she wants to come back and try and see you got to help. You know one's there like we're gonna yeah, talk about it's, it's a typical breakup, even when someone gets when someone dies in the family. So the grandma dies and everyone's fighting for the house. Yeah. And you say, nobody put money in this, apart yeah. from the grandma and the granddad. But right. all of the all of the siblings feel like they, they got ownership because oh, I stayed here the longest, or I helped I helped mom and dad the longest. It don't matter, nobody put money in. No one did go in their pocket and say, this is for the house. No one done that because you would have been too young or when you grew up, you decided to go and live your life the way that you want to live. But that, te that tends to be a typical uh, issue. It, is it a, tends to be a typical issue. But, say, just to round it up, because I want to bring it to the last point. <laughs> and I said to my brother Wayne as well, yeah? I would hate to see, like, say for example, Barclay said, right, we're going to give 1200 for the next five years to every black person. And black person by DNA. You're not going to have any Justin Timberlake looking guys coming in talking about, hey, or, well, you know, my, my grandfather's from, you know, from Kenya. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not trying to hear none of that. We're talking about black people by, uh, you know, All DNA. I know is if it was to happen, Gucci, Louis Vuitton would be rich, richer than they are now because the majority of black people, that's what they're going to do. They're just going to floss the money away. And I'm sorry to say it, but that's the mind. I'm not saying that we don't deserve something in reparations. And I'm, when you say reparations, it might not be money in what we're talking about, but the majority of people, black people at this particular moment in time, how I see it, maybe it's my circle. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even going to act as though, but the majority, they're going to floss. It's as simple as that. They're going to party and floss. And, this, and this is, this is that, is how is that going to help? And I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. And I'm not saying it should happen. I'd rather listen to everybody else's point of view, but first. Like, this is the thing. This is what you're obviously, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. Literally, when you're dealing with reparations, it would annoy me to see someone go into Gucci and spending that 1200 at Gucci. <laughs> Thinking about even buying themselves a house. I'm not sure if you got a few black all sudden, but thinking of raw, you know what? These men are actually giving back. So, for example, yeah, right now, um, the coronavirus has showed all of us, especially myself, is that the government can give back. Can. Exactly. Yeah, they can follow everyone. They have to mm. For not working because of a virus. Remember the money, again, and as we've seen already, Seven months ago, eight months ago, the government never had no money in the UK. Oh, it was broke. America was talking about, oh, we're broken. We're in trillions of debt. Now they started printing money as if they're trafficking drugs. You know what I'm saying, fam? Like, they might all printing money, like 100 billion mm -hmm. in the UK economy to help fix it. So essentially, they can do these things. But my question again, can we handle it? I mean, 
like Karen said, some will be going to Gucci. I know if it was me, for example, we'll put it into our business on the investment that will help us and our children for the future that we're coming from. Vice versa with Vicky as well. So, but are we, as, as a people, do you think right now is the time for reparations? Because we spoke about family, we spoke about trauma, we spoke about, and as you can see, Karen and Vicky all agree, but you come from different aspects of family. So I'm coming from. So mm. I don't know if family comes into the world. Share it with me, I would hope so. But um, he's gonna, he's gonna at least maybe all of a all actual family members. Vice versa, we're saying, I know when it comes to reparations, and even then, is it cash? Do you want land? I personally would take land over cash. You know, are we, are we talking yeah. about? Is, is it, are we talking about laws? I would rather have reparations in the form of. Britain cannot take a certain amount of resources from Ghana anymore without yeah. permission. And under, under a percentage of, let's just say, 80 to 20, so they take 20% underneath that. I would even, I'd rather have that as a reparation because I understand how these countries now have built their wealth. I understand how these countries now have been successful. They haven't been successful from money. money. They've been successful from deception and they've been I successful from monetizing how to do so what do you guys think would you obviously are reparations are we doing not i think like to be to be honest i think it's a bit overdue that's one of my feelings um because i think the generations that that re that those reparations were owed to have definitely gone but in terms of like that that particular generation that were impacted by it coming out of that time so I think it's something that's overdue. And I do think that even if 50% of the people do something sensible with it, it's still going to make a bigger difference than there being nothing done at all. And I feel like just with how I see society, we're going to be waiting a long time if we're waiting for everyone to kind of clock in or even like for like it to be, let's say, 60, 40, to kind of clock in and be a bit more smart with what they're doing. And I do think that the points that you're making are very valid around reparations could be taken in different ways. You know, the fact is there's still, Africa's still being shorted for stuff and resources. It's still happening. So, yeah, but I, but I do think like if it was, to, I think it's just overdue and I think it, it would need to happen. And even if half of those people just decide to go rich up Gucci, that's their own. As long as my family's not doing that and they're, and they're doing you know, we're, we're all kind of honed in, but I think we've I also kind of had these conversations in my family to kind of know where we're all at, so that there's still that check-in. I would be all right with it. But then again, I'm, I'm aware that I'm speaking and I'm saying I, that's not the whole black nation. So to say, are we ready for it as a population? I don't really know, no. Okay, cool. ATM, what do you think? I'm trying to understand. I'm, I'm really trying to get my head around what you're actually saying because you're, you're saying if reparation is, is given, but in what form? Are we, is there a form of giving that out? Like how, or, are you, or is this something that you're just saying, these are the possible ways? I want to know what I, should, what I should address first. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you an example, yeah? Because obviously, again, this is something that could possibly happen. Right now, um, Lloyd's and I yeah, think but do they have a form of how they're going to do that? It, all they said is that they were going to give this is just an article I've read. All they said is that they were going to give a percentage, I don't know if it was 10% or whatever, to a charity that helps black people. Yeah, now, all right, so then that's, that's so then that's different. Then, so obviously, I can I can address it then, I, I can address it based on what you're saying because obviously. Mm -hmm. Vicky, Karen, and yourself said, you both, all three of you said, you'd be upset if someone went to Gucci or Louis Vuitton or any of these kind of stores and spent money. Um, but that's not what's being said. What's being said is obviously money is going to be given to charity. Okay, so you want, oh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So you want to actually discuss it from a standpoint? I'm just trying to understand on what, uh, on what way I should, I should address the, the question because the question seems direct in one aspect but then we've gone down a road of talking about gucci louis and 
So I want to know okay, which I get it. And the sense of if we're speaking about reparations is how they're given, for example, is it a case of they're giving people money? Because yeah. I think you made the comparison between people or are we stopping certain was, oppressions that are being had towards a nation? Because then obviously it's two different things. Because obviously when it is, like that Vicky was saying, I was just talking about, is there, there's cash reparations, we can talk about land. All right, let me just make it more easier for the three of us to answer there. Four of us, sorry, to answer here. No, I don't mind answering both, but I just wanted to know which one I should address first, because... If, answer if, if answer the one that we both answered. Answer, answer if we were given cash reparations per person, then. We were given cash reparations of 1200 each month for four years. Do you think that, that people right now are ready for that? £1,200 each month for four years. As a, as, a, as a sum of reparations? I think that it would definitely serve the black community. Um, I am in agreement to what Vicky said. And Vicky said that even if it's 50% or even 40%, even if we say 35%, we could even go down to 10%. It's still better than 0% because right now we gain 0%. And we're in a deficit when it comes to finances. So um, I would I would be for it, regardless if people chooses to spend the money how they choose to spend the money. We can all have, we have all spent money in life in something that we know we could have spent better somewhere else. But that's that's a learning lesson. Um, I think maybe the first year, loads of people probably would spend money in places that they're not supposed to spend it. Maybe in the first two years. At some point, they might wake up. And if they don't, that's their loss. But there would be people that would take full advantage of the situation. And, and, if, and I think that's better than zero at all because right now, nobody's gaining nothing at all. So if someone chooses to spend Gucci, Louis, we've all done it at some stage in our life, I'm assuming. Um, that's an assumption I made. Um, if you've been in a financial position to do so. Um, and I think that's part of growing. Now, where I'm at in life is, and you would very, you would very much know, Jess, there would be a time in my life where my wardrobe was nothing but high, high-end brands. Um, and then I've grown older, had a child, and it's humbled me. And circumstances have changed, so it's humbled me. Um, and I think that's part of growing. So if you're going to give 1200 to anyone age 18 to 25, they are going to spend the money. If you give money to anybody 30 plus, they are going to make investments or make better decisions. Not all, but I think that there's going to be a higher percentage. So when we're talking about giving money, we need to understand the age bracket that we're talking about because we can't just plaster everybody with the same brush um, so if it's the younger generation, they're going to spunk it. They're going to be going in and out of these shops, spending money willy-nilly because they don't understand the value of money. They don't understand uh, uh, um, who they're enriching. If you're going to give money to anybody over 30, they're going to make better decisions. And then there's this small gap between 25 and 30 that have kind of got their heads screwed on that make good investments now because I've seen it a lot now. I've seen a lot of young men at the age and young women at the age of 25 that make better decisions than I made when I was younger. And they've got a lot more than I had at that, at that age because they're making better decisions. So I, I'm for it, essentially, answering the question. I'm, I'm definitely for that. What do you, what do you think? Um, um, so with, with, with that then, I mean, for me personally, it's a tough one. I think I would have to remove my emotions from receiving, I mean, from actually looking at other people and what they're going to do with their money and focus on what I can help. But my next thing to you lot is, would you rather money... Could you be upset with an 18-year-old that goes to Gucci or Louis Vuitton? Could you be yes. upset with... You could. I'd be vexed. Are you joking? Yes? I would. I would. You it is. I can understand the journey. I'd be upset. I feel like there's, a, there's an arrogance now with a lot of the younger generation. Not, not all, but there's a lot of arrogance with some of them where they don't want to listen. 
and they only want to listen in an emergency situation, whether it's jail. No, but or... I think I think it's very, I think we're being harsh on our eighteen year olds. I think we're harsh on that that age group. Because essentially, they're going to make mistakes. The same mistakes that we made. The same way that we went out and done things. The same way we parted. The same way that we had sex unprotected. The same way that we uh, had fights and done things or you ruined other people's lives. I think that's, I think me personally, I think that's super harsh. Because I think that we're all young once and we all make mistakes. And if at the age of 18, I can't speak for everybody here. But I know at the age of 18, I made super dumb decisions and I know let's say for instance at the age of 18 if someone gave me 250 grand in one lump sum I would have I wouldn't say that I would have spent it all but I would have spent a lot of it reason being the reason why I would have spent a lot of it is because there was no generation above me to teach me exactly what I needed to do with my money so I would spunk it so So essentially I wouldn't be upset. I would be upset with the generation above or the wow. generation above them because if the 18 year old gets £1,200 every month and chooses to spunk it up the wall, then can we blame them? No. I don't, me personally, I don't blame kids. I can't, I just can't. I can't blame kids for. The thing is, uh, the, way, the way I look at it is, I think sometimes we think, I, I, I'm a long way from 18. Right, but I do know how I was thinking at the time, and I and and I honestly know that the way how I was thinking at that time wasn't normal. I know it wasn't normal, right, for an average eighteen-year-old. But I bought my first house when I was twenty, right. So, so the thing is, at eighteen, I wanted to buy my own house. I'm not saying every eighteen-year-old thinks like this, right. But I do think that everybody has a responsibility once you reach a certain age. So even after the age of eighteen. You still have to start thinking because it's the age of responsibility. Okay, can I ask you? I don't know. Obviously, uh, can I ask you a personal question? The question yeah. is not going to be. You don't have to answer. Uh, could I? Could I make an assumption that your mother owned her house? My mum and dad owned their house. That makes a massive difference. You know why? Because that's something that is taught. So regardless if they told you the ins and outs, we are a generation and people and it's not even just a generation we're not just basing this on black people this is people when people see they believe and they achieve and unfortunately if you cannot see it you cannot believe it and you will not achieve it so somebody at your age at the age of 20 because i know a few people at the age of a very young age that bought bought their properties bearing in mind you know that it was a lot easier then because it was 100 percent more yeah 100 percent to do was have a job yeah, and it could be a job at Tesco, Sainsbury's. It didn't matter as long as you had regular income, you could get a, you walk into the bank and they would give you a mortgage. And the thing is, the the the, the thing is, I, my children have to buy properties because I'm not allowing them to move out of my house without them having their own property. They have to. Like I'm not. They're not going to go into rent house. No way. And I'm aware that everybody doesn't think the same. But what I'm trying to say is. I haven't got, honestly, I don't have time to sit down and worry about who thinks the same way that I think. We Mm -hmm. have to think like this. I need to think like this. Jesse needs to think like this. You need to think like this. And so does Victoria need to think like this, right? And when we think like this, then we need to raise our children to think like this. And then when we have our children, which we have our children, we mix with the same like-minded circle and we build our circle in that way. That's how how it has to be. Everyone's going to think like us. What we need to do, I love people, right? And I will help. I can't even t- I can't tell you the countless amount of people that I've helped during this quarantine, right? I have. But I'm not putting, but I'm not trying to, it's not like before where I was in so heavily invested that I couldn't sleep at night. Mm. And now I realise that we aren't all the same. We don't have all the same mindset. I help wherever I can because number one is to help my people. But I have, I have to, it's my kids. I have to drill it into my kids. And I, I have to invest in, in my, I have to invest in my children and I have to just hope that what I'm doing is, is, is enough for them to then do it to their children. And anyone who's around me, Jesse, we speak. Jesse, this is what you need to be doing. If I've got a little link or a little contact, then I can say, Jesse, here's the link, here's the contact, come, let's do it. You know, there's a lot, we need to, we need to help each other in our circles. I, yeah, you know what? This, this this is the thing. This is for me. Yeah, I believe that, and I and I hundred percent agree with what you're saying. I just feel with some of the younger kids now, 
what you're finding is there's seven-year-old entrepreneurs on YouTube. There's a lot of young entrepreneurs right now that these kids know about, but they don't want to listen because it's not cool. And I get everyone goes for their process. So yeah. you say there's easier tools right now for an 18-year-old to utilize these 1,200 each month. True. And actually then back 30, let's just say what, back in the 80s or 90s. You see what I'm coming from? This is why I would get angry at the 18-year-old. Not because of, I understand there's something in, in, in environments where they can't fix certain things. I get it. But now, nowadays, like, let's keep it real. When was the last time you lot went to a library? Listen, it's easy now. Jesse, do you think I could build what I built today if there was no internet? Look at look, look at what we're doing right now. This conversation. I could never do it. I could never do it. The internet has made everything possible. Today, to me, all right, they might not be to go out and get a house with, because they need, uh, I think it's 10% mortgage now they need. But there's so much ways how they can be successful. If the internet was about in my day maybe I, I maybe i'd have been even further down the, but i mean i'm not gonna i'm not giving them i'm not gonna say i wouldn't be vexed if they gave if uh, they gave an 18 year old 1200 a month and they blew it on gucci i would be most upset even when the little rappers do it i'm most i'm upset i'm just like what are you doing i'm just like you no. is, I, think, I, I, I do think i, I definitely get the, the frustration that can come with that when you see somebody, I guess it's a case of seeing someone wasting potential, but yeah, if you, that child does not understand that that's a potential they have, I think going back to you made the point, if you can't see it uh, and you can't imagine it and it's not around you, how do you expect to have it? And you do have those odd people who do think outside of the box and, you know, and really go for what they want, but that's not every child, do you get what I mean? And a lot of kids, and I just think this, this is coming out from, let's say like the foster care perspective, because I worked in foster care for a period of time. And some of the experiences that these kids are having in their lives is leading them down a route where all they want to do is escape, 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 escape. So yeah, the same thing got, I worked in youth work. We've got yeah. to understand that the reason why they blow their money on Gucci is because that's what they see, believe and achieve. Same way where if you look at most young boys at some stage, they believe they can become footballers. Most primary school kids at some stage, not all, but a lot, yeah, want to become footballers because that's what they see, believe in, and, and, and believe they, they can achieve. So we got to bear that in mind. And that yeah. obviously will lead down a, a whole different kind of discussion because that's not an accident. That is a systematic that's the, and based on what we were talking about before. That's a systematic problem. That's the reason why, if I was to ask most people, how many multimillionaires do you know that are black, man or woman? Yeah. That are not from sports and entertainment. Most people can't name them. And that's not an accident. Yeah. That's a systematic thing. And that's the reason why young 18 year olds go out, blow it on Gucci, Louis, Burberry, uh, D Squared, and all these other brands. It's because that's what they see. That's what's previewed to them. So you can't blame. How, so can, we go, saying, how can we go out and reach them? Them in. How can we go out and reach those children then? Or can we? Or do we do that? Do I that? Know, of course, they can definitely be reached. But we got. To, we've got to be able to put ourselves out there. Essentially, first and foremost. And if we're not willing to put ourselves out there first and foremost, then we're never going to be. Dead. We're never going to be seen. So, for instance, like. Uh, uh, for instance, if I knew a multi-millionaire that's a black man or a black woman that doesn't do sports and entertainment uh, 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 and i done what I need to do on my platform, which is going to come at some stage, um, mm. that, that, for them to see that, that's a great thing. That's, to be that's stuff that needs to be seen. Do they need to be millionaires or do they just need to be successful people? So, for example, we know... They need to be inspired. If they're not inspired, it's not going to happen. It just won't happen. Does it need to be a millionaire? This is what I'm asking. Because obviously... Oh, no, me, no, it, doesn't have to be a million, it doesn't have to be a millionaire, but it's got to be somebody that's got their head screwed on and is... is uh, not all the time. It doesn't always have to come from the streets or doesn't have to come from a certain narrative or a disproportionate uh, society. But... Uh, I mean, a, a, a broken society or community, but... Um, I, 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 do, I think you're right. I think you're right. And I do feel like even... Remember, we used to go to the... Um, we used to go to the college in North London and talk to... Remember, we'd done that once and spoke to the kids. And I remember speaking to the... To, I remember speaking and, and I was just basically saying, I didn't go to university. 
and I was showing them the Jamaica Valley products and whatever and, I, and they were going you didn't go to university and I said no because it was like it was that it wasn't it was you know like a vocational six uh, a vocational college so it wasn't like it was they were doing vocational courses like travel and tourism which I started out doing travel and tourism and I said yeah I, I started out doing travel and tourism and then I just decided I didn't want to do travel and tourism anymore I don't want to open my own business and I started to see a spark in their eyes like well, if she could do it, then I could do it. And I'm saying, yeah, if you, I said, I'm not book smart like that. You just have to have a passion at something that you want in life and go for it. And then it was at that time where I realized some of these kids don't realize they've been told so much that they can't do something. They don't believe that they can actually do it. But then I remembered, I was like that as well. I never thought that I was smart, but I, but I, it's like, I can't remember what it was that actually made me think, I am smart. I can't remember what what happened, but I do believe. Yeah, we do have we do have a what is it? Uh, is it a commitment? We do have a commitment to yeah. go back to the schools, to the colleges, to our people, and let them understand that they can do it too. Because maybe they are growing up in households where they're not being told that they can do it. You know, yeah. maybe. And that was stemmed back into what I was explaining before about it being more than just a household because you might go yeah. to a college you might go to a university and you might find passion in someone or someone that's really good at something and go actually do you know what come i can see you've yeah, got it in yeah. come. and then before you know it, you're building them up they're doing something similar to what you're doing and you and and now you, you're starting to build a network of wealthy people at a very mm. young age but they've mm. got to be a, most people are coming from broken homes most people are coming from uh, uh, um, situations where they can't see through the, the smoke. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. They, can't, they just can't. And that's the reason why people go out. And that's why I said I, I would, there's no way I'll be able to blame an 18 year old that spunks his money on, on whatever he chooses to do. Like, I just can't because he is only seeing what is in front of him. And what's in front of him is his friend and then his friend and then his friend. And I never had no olders really show me what I should have been doing. Because yeah. they were making their money too. So their thing was, well, do you know what? Let's rave this weekend. Or let's do this this weekend. Or let's, do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm seeing, isn't it, from a very young age when man's rolling with people that are well surplus my age. No, I hear that. I hear that. And I feel I'm going to end on this as well. Isn't it? I feel like it's definitely a balance of what you're seeing. That, that's true. But I do feel in today's age, because even at that college, Karen, when we spoke, what was most of those kids doing when you speak to them? They said to you, oh, I've got a YouTube page or YouTube channel. Oh, I've got an Instagram page. Oh, basically, there is an aspect of mentoring outside of what they see now online. So, for example, KSI, for example, um, came up from doing YouTube. Um, reviews on him playing that like, video games, FIFA games, and whatnot. And when I spoke to my nephew, he's twelve. He tells me like, oh, I want to be YouTuber." And I feel like most kids that I do speak to at a younger age have actually come and said to me, "Right, oh, like I actually want to be a YouTuber or whatnot." Yeah, yeah, they do. But that's what they see once again, though. They don't. They're not seeing black lawyers. They're not seeing black judges. They're not seeing black police officers. They're not seeing. When they're not seeing those people in the. They're not seeing black dentists. Yeah. yeah, they're not seeing that. So how can you ask them, or why would anyone want to go down that road? You find that uh, the dentist industry tends to be, uh, if it's not Caucasian, it's it's Asian people. Any mm -hmm. dentist you go into, and then you might get a dentist. I don't know what if they call them like the assistant dentist. You might get a black, a young black female. Mm. You may, but it's normally the dentist people themselves. Like I've been on a ward where with, with, with students, like my uh, sister's, um, my sister's best, one of my sister's good friends is like the manager of one of the wards that she mm. does all the bookings and all the rest of it. And you go on the ward, it's all Asians. It's all white people yeah. or Caucasians and it's all Asians because that's what they see. They, and if you ask them about their family, their families are, are, are from very professional backgrounds. So they might have been a lawyer or they might have been a doctor or GP. Mm. So that's naturally that, that they're going to go down that road because that's what they see. Where I feel we're... like all kids are going to want to do the easy way out. Because listen, my kids come to me and say certain things like, "I want to be mom. Can I be a YouTuber?" Or 
I feel like I could be an Instagram model, mum. And you know, I'm just like, are you all like, what? So you mean to tell me, right? But the thing is, kids are going to come and tell you these things. But I feel like it's for you to kind of, because I just break it down. I break it down. So I'll say, oh, you want to be an Instagram model? So you, if I say to you, take that off. They don't look right. Your hair don't do right. You cry. I said, imagine a thousand people telling you that on one post. How are you going to deal with that? You know, so what I, so I feel like a lot of parents just need to kind of. But it does work though. Karen, it does work. The thing is, can I just say that the one thing that I see T.I. do, and I do like the fact that he does it with his kids, where everything that they say they're interested in, he tries to get them connected with somebody who's going to show them the reality of the job. (laughs) And then it's like, is this something you're still interested in? Do you still want to do it? And I think my sister took it quite on a little bit with my niece. So like my niece is in terms of, and I, now this is me like kind of like, I can't agree with the idea that all kids want to take the easy way out. But I think yeah. there is that fact of they don't see all the hard work that goes into or the graft necessarily that goes into it. A lot of the times what you're seeing is always the finished product. Um, mm-hmm. But like my niece wants to be, um, she wants to go into, I think it, it's a form of engineering, but it's like to do with maths. Um, mm. and so she's like that's what I want to do I like working with numbers I know what the jobs are like but I've, I've also sent her stuff and I know my sister's also had those conversations where I've said to her read up on these courses that you're saying you want to do and understand what you need to do to get on the course same thing my mum did with me mm. right and then she's also taken on doing nails she's been watching all these videos in her spare time of YouTube videos when she did my sister's nails we were like you, you do realise that you're actually quite good at this. So she's been practising <laughs> on, on her friends, on her cousins, charging them a little bit here and there. And it's like, it's something that she could build on and she understands it to be, I, I could, I could, I'm going to feed into these two things here. It's not taken away from my education. And obviously, especially during lockdown, it's not taken away from my education, but I can have this as like a side hustle. And I think what you find people tend to do is if the side business does start to take off more, then that might be something they look into. But she's like, this is something that can financially support me through X, Y, Z and the other. She's whatever said to me is, I want to save, I want to save to buy a house. And I do think it's because it's what she's been fed. And I do think obviously with, there is that thing of kids wanting to be like Insta famous because it's now the glamorized thing, you know? Yeah. But I think there've been worse things that have been glamorized, i.e. the idea of being on road. Yeah, that was glamorized at a certain point in time. So I'm not mad that it shifted to what it has now, but I I don't think all kids necessarily want to take the easy way out. But then I'm saying that she's 16, she's not young, young. Whereas in my nephew now, that's 10, will be telling me something different. I want to be a race car driver, and he does have yeah. a heavy interest in cars, so there might be something to it. But just with uh-huh. what I was saying, that like Ti does, he very much will feed into all these things, but he tries to to help his kids see really what is this about what goes into it and then you tell me what you want you know at the end of it like is this something you're still interested in is there something else yeah called your fancy and i think childhood is the space to do that because it's safe you know you ain't, you're not making big losses at a young age yeah. no, I, I feel like it all goes back to again what we were saying about teaching and obviously starting with how we work together in the community in our household and everything else i feel like coming from where we're coming from there's a lot of different um, views on how to actually get it. But the main good thing is that there is a way to get it. And I think we've got to stick to that. I think we've got to stick on other, we've got to be open to other things as well. You know, essentially, you know, when it comes to, you know, the statues, when it comes to the history, teaching our children history, when it comes to obviously reparations, what you find is that we need to really teach ourselves these things first. And the government isn't for people. So we need to stop looking for handouts. Handouts officially be banned, I feel personally, because what happens with a handout is that the person that receives it doesn't understand what the handout is. He just receives the end result, which is someone coming from. So some people will see this video and be like, oh, that episode is sick and I like it. But then if they understood setting up, editing, the sound, all the stuff of different things that, that go into it, if they understood that process, they may be put off doing it for themselves. Do you see where I'm coming from? So I feel like we need to obviously entangle, I don't even want to use that word, untangle the, the process and obviously, 
you know, work together in, in, in you know, building that community inside the household and outside as well. Then.